The Outdoor Show. It's the program that puts you into the peaceful and beautiful home of Mother Nature. It moves you back to that calm fishing pond up north, one step away from Lake Michigan, or into your hunting blind on a brisk fall morning. The Outdoor Show. It's a peaceful program. This is not your mother's outdoor show. This is the WHTC Outdoor Show, hosted by a guy who literally has hunting in his name. Tom Meddendorp is Dutch for Village in the Maiden, or King's Hunting Ground. Your co-host, sometimes, is Tim Becker of Powderhorn Guns and Archery. It's time for what really happens when the guys go up north on that hunting trip. It's time for the WHTC Outdoor Show, presented by My Firearms ETS. That's M-I Firearms ETS on 1450 WHTC, Holland's News Leader. Good morning. Welcome to the Outdoor Show. How are you this morning, Tim? Wonderful. How about you, Tom? I'm doing great. And Bob, how are you? I'm doing great. It's the best part yes. of the morning. We got oh, Bob yeah. back. I'll That's right. What. I was just going to say, listeners, Bob is back. How yep. else do you start a Saturday morning? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, uh, by April 20th, you'll be able to start, uh, and I don't know what the 20th is. The 20th is a Monday. or what? Yeah, I don't know. I think, I think and I'm pretty sure it's the 20th. Well, you know, I got this calendar here. I could look at this calendar. I bet it's a Monday. I'll bet it's a Monday. Yep. So I guess you have to wait till the 25th to start your Saturday morning with turkey hunting. Oh, yeah. And if you want to know a little bit about scouting before the seasons begin, uh, go back to whtc.com and take a look at uh, media, podcasts, and then scroll down to the outdoor show and catch last week's show with Jim Boyce. Yeah. From uh, Rod Benson. Uh, game calls. Game yep. calls. You bet. I was going to say turkey calls, but I remember last week you reminded me. It's game calls. They yep. got all of them. You got it. You got it. And make sure you get down to the store and get yourself into a nice uh, uh, turkey gun or into your cross. You know, oh, if you yeah. got a crossbow, well, yeah. come on down and talk to me about it. We'll get you all set up yeah. for uh, harvesting your first turkey with a crossbow. That's kind of fun. Or compound. Yeah. Or if you're that good, a recurve. Yeah. Yeah. Well, now the question would be, Tim, what time can we stop down to the store? Anytime you want. We open up at right now. I thought maybe you're leaving the door unlocked. Oh, I trust all my customers. Oh, They're wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> they all have a key. I have one of them. Oh, that's nice. They key don't have the, the code city. to the Bob's alarm. Bob's saying, bill. I yeah. don't have it. Yeah. <laughs> Neither do I, but yeah. we don't have a code to the alarm either. That's yeah, true. true. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, you can come in, but the alarm will get yeah. you. <laughs> no, uh, we it's opened up. It's not the alarm. Up. It's the cops that are there in like true. three seconds. Yeah. They show up when the alarm yeah. goes off. I live about two minutes away. And you can't when the, when the alarm company calls, I live about two minutes away. Otherwise, oh, it's yeah. about four. Right. But uh, <laughs> I've never been there before the, the, the police when the well, alarm and, and that's that's a that's, really cool thing because they say the average response time for average response time for the police departments in, in uh, the United States. Yep. Seven to ten minutes. I'll tell you what, Ottawa County's got it going on. They're there. They're yep. right now. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, and usually there's, you know, that alarm goes off and it calls... And it can be something as small as a mouse running across the floor. You know, it's not like we're getting broken into. Well, now don't say that day. because you know Cal's listening right now, and he's going to say, guys, guys, that's a mouse. Don't worry about that yep. guy. Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. And bet, speaking but, of Cal. Yep. yep. We, are, we are now open Monday through uh, Saturday. Been open the last two weeks. Um, well, right that's now, not speaking of Cal. That's going back to the hours because we got oh. sidetracked. Sorry. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I see what you're saying. No, I went the wrong direction yeah. because we forgot to finish the hours. Yeah, we forgot to finish hours. the hours. The hours, Monday okay. through Saturday. Monday through Saturday. Right now it's 10 a.m. till 5 p.m. Um, Monday through Friday. Saturday, 8 a.m. till 3. Okay, 10 to 5. Yep. Monday through Friday. Yep. Saturday, 8 to 3. Yep. And okay. shortly we're going to be opening up somewhere between 6.30 in the morning and 7 in the morning all summer long and into the, the fall when the fishing gets going here, um, and I am pleased to say the fishing has started. I was uh, going to ask you yep, about that. Yeah. Has it, the ice receded enough? Is it gone? Mac is open. Mac's completely open. Com as far as I've seen, completely open. Okay. There's a lot of people starting to fish the rivers for suckers and Dutton Park. Well, now they're fishing for those suckers. What about the walleye? Haven't you know how much, much I like them. walleye. Yeah, I haven't heard much about the walleye. I've had nobody coming in looking for them. I've had some bluegill people, crappie well, people. Where do you think you can learn about the walleye? Well, I think the it? only place to learn about walleye is West Michigan Walleye Club. Yeah. Oh, you bet. West sure. Michigan Walleye yeah. Club. WestMichiganWalleyeClub.org. Yeah, I think. Yeah, it is.org. WestMichiganWalleyeClub.org. 
and you can get your membership for thirty dollars. Yeah, thirty bucks. Thirty bucks wow. for the year, and, and you then, get the MUCC membership that's at the same bargain. time. Yeah, and then you're with that. You're entered into all eight adult tournaments, plus, and, and there's a kid tournament. Nice through the year. You for don't free. have to pay any additional. Wow. That's yeah. a good deal. That's a really good yeah. deal. Yep. Don't we wish we could find that uh, for a range membership? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and competitions. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. You bet. So, no, we'll be opening up early so you can come in and get all your bait and everything first thing in the morning. Um, also, the suckers are are starting to bite. They well, are I'm, starting to get into the river. So, And I and want everybody to remember, sucker spearing is no longer April 1st. You can go out tonight. Say, yeah, the, oh, the spearing. It's year-round now. Wow. So now they're not at a full run yet. No, I, I think the full run's going to be a little late this year. I think it's going to be right around the first weekend of April, maybe into the second. Um, well, then we'll be in April 1, and people will be on their regular schedule. Absolutely. Because it's spring break. Oh, absolutely. Oh. And there's no better time to get out sucker spearing than spring break. Uh, I know for years we took the kids out sucker spearing yep. on spring break. That, were, uh, that was the highlight of yep. spring break because – they wanted to go out sucker spear. Oh, yeah. Well, now that wasn't the highlight for us, my, my buddies and I, because we had to stay up late <laughs> oh, and then yeah. go to work yet yeah. Yeah. and then yep. stay up late right. because they wanted to go day after yep. day after yeah. day. And, of course, they're kids, and it's a spring break, so they got to sleep in. Sure. <laughs> yeah. You know, and I've never missed a year without spearing since I can remember. Last year, I even speared wow. still. So I, it's just Did a you? fun time. Yep. Yeah. I can't remember if I went last year or not because friends that don't do it, their kids find out about it, and then they, they'll call and ask, will it's, you take my kids spearing? It's a riot. The river's oh, It really house. is. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> but, oh, I never thought about that. Yeah. Yeah, it's right there, so I don't have to travel far. Yep. That's you good. Know. That's always good. Yeah, but you It's bet. very good. Yeah. <laughs> but, and I've had salmon all the way up there behind my house. Oh, absolutely. That's 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 pretty cool, too. Yep. But, and uh, I have spears right at the store. Come I'll, buy them. I've been selling them like crazy. I do got, you do? Do you have the handles or just the spearheads? I have just the spearheads. I don't handle the handles because you can go right down to the lows. Well, what I should tell people now, if they want a full ten foot handle, oh no no no, no not if they want a full ten foot handle, they don't have to cut anything. If they want a five foot handle, you can get it at different places uh, that they have five foot pieces of steel conduit. It's the thin wall conduit, EMT. Oh, oh yeah. Drill drill through the conduit and put a bolt in there. That's been our best bet. Lightweight. Oh. And what we do is we take and run, uh, we take electrical tape and wrap, you know, because the, the spearhead has the, the conical shape for the yeah. uh, wood handle to go in. So you got this little gap there, right? Well, that'll fill up with mud and everything else, and then it gets all over in the truck, and then it, it drains out at home, everything. So we just would wrap that, and it won't pick up the extra water call, weight yeah. and, oh. and stuff like that. And then on the other end, take a, a bottle cap. Whichever side, whichever old bottle you have that it'll fit on there, uh, meaning a plastic cap, and tape that to the top end so you don't have that bare piece of conduit oh, right. that can catch things and scratch things. Yeah. And uh, that's we've had those spears for a long time. And, yep. and that's all about being an electrician, right, oh, Bob? Yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> when you're an electrician, you use electrician stuff. That's right. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Yep. Just don't use flexible metal conduit for the handle. Yeah, yeah that would well. be bad. <laughs> yeah, you bet. Yeah. You bet. But... Powderhorn's got a lot of good things going on. Um, we're going to be a f- complete full running fishing store this year. We have got all sorts of new product going. That well, you got new, new uh, different uh, can't think brand names. You got new brand names. Oh yeah, names. yeah, oh. yeah, for sure. And Give especially salmon. Um, the first one we picked up, Blood Run Tackle, oh. which is all your super coppers. So we'll be able to set up all the salmon salmon fishermen with their their. Wait coppers. a minute! I thought we weren't talking about the cops yet. No, 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 no. Copper. Yeah. But, oh, but you, know Cal, you know Cal's a super copper. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I got all that super copper going, um, fluorocarbon leaders, everything, um, big weenie uh, meat rigs, boards, everything. You like the name, don't you? <laughs> Caught you off guard first thing in the morning. Where do they come up with these trade yeah, names? Yeah. Wow. They're a, they're a local a company question. right out of Grand Rapids, and wow. uh, they're the hottest thing going on Lake Michigan right now. So we're going to have next week, I've got, Blood Run Tackle coming in today to set up all their stuff. I've got uh, the Big Weenie brand coming in next week. They're going to mail everything in to me. Um, I will have all the copper rods, reels, setups, everything. Um, there is a couple new spoon designers that are going to be putting theirs in, and I'm going to wait until uh, to release that until we're ready to put them in just so 
make it exciting. Nice. Yep. So we got a whole <laughs> lot going on with salmon fishing. I've got. He wants the suspense. Right, yes. right, right, right. You have to so, wait for these. Oh, you yeah. can't go get that fish with that today. You have to you use bet. this today. That's right. Come I'm going to have all the meat for your meat rigs right at the store. Um, anything you can think of for salmon fishing is going to be there. We're going to have a lot to do with uh, uh, perch, walleye, bluegill, uh, crappie, bass, anything you want. Come on down. That's why we're going to be opening up early. We you didn't have... say walleye. I did. I just said walleye. Perch, crappie, bluegill, bass. Walleye. I didn't catch the walleye. Well, you're getting old. <laughs> so, <laughs> so say, say walleye a couple walleye, more times. Walleye, walleye. walleye. West Michigan, West Michigan walleye, walleye Club. Walleye. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I'm going to have all that there. Um, stop on in and see us because we're putting in a lot new inventory, having a lot of fun. I've got all your crawlers right now, so stop on in and, and get out in the water. Um, this morning would be horrible. I saw 15 degrees on the ride oh, in. Was not yeah. excited about that. But, Cold this yeah. morning. yeah. Get in there, and we've got some rain in the forecast. That's going to do nothing but improve our fishing. Well, that's why I was asking about that full run. Yeah. If we get we need that warm decent rain, rain yeah. I think it was Tuesday or Wednesday it showed. Uh, I think in the next 10 days, we've got like three days of rain. But if we get that first decent rain, if it's that, they'll start running. Yeah. The worst part is when it rains too much. Yeah, it muds it, it all up. Oh, muds yeah. up, and it's too deep, and, yeah. and then you can't go get them, and spring break's coming. Yeah, you got it. Yep. We need to you have the it. water down. Yeah. And the sucker's running, and we're going to go smearing. You got it. But now, make sure you stop into the store and talk to me about all this and about all of our new stuff going on. You're going to tell people it. how to cook that fish once they get it? Sucker, you can tell them how to cook, but <laughs> salmon and walleye, I'm all over it. And bluegill and perch. But now, why, you, why, would you, why would you say it that way? Because I know that... Have you, you ever had sucker? You know what? I've had smoked sucker one time, uh-huh. and it was good. It was awesome. Ooh. I would say good. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Because it's such a mild fish. Now maybe that was the smoking the, the that process. That could be that, yeah. that wasn't fabulous. But the uh it's a very mild fish. It's like white fish. Mm-hmm. But you have to make sure you get the mud vein out. Yep. You can't go. That's on almost with the mud all vein. fish. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's Sam, true. Sam in the mud vein, get that out too. Yeah, you go pike and stuff. You gotta yeah. you gotta get that out of there. Otherwise yep. it just it's not good. You got it. Yeah. Then it's then it's Icky. <laughs> Icky. <laughs> oh, the Outdoor Show is brought to you by Westonbrook Mower, where they service what they sell. All units are ready to use when they leave the store, and Westonbrook submits your warranty information so you don't have to. Stop into the Holland or the Jenison store, check them out on your computer at westonbrookmower.com, or call them at 616-396-5733. Lines are open. Give us a call, 395-1450. We'll be back here shortly on the Outdoor Show. Welcome back to the Outdoor Show, brought to you by Lakeshore Tackle and Firearms, your full-service gun dealer, stocking new and used firearms, Glock, Six Hour, Ruger, and more. Lakeshore Tackle and Firearms are buyers of all kinds of firearms and located at 6398 Blue Star Highway, just six short miles south of Holland at Exit 41. Find them on your computer at lakeshoretackleandfirearms.com. We're back, ready to talk with you. Give us a call, 395-1450. If you missed the first segment, there's a lot of info there. Mm-hmm. Well, you better get yeah. to whtc.com, hit media, podcast, and scroll down to the Outdoor Show. Pick up the the podcasted uh, version, which will be on there at 801. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, I'm thinking we need to change it to the best Outdoor Show. The best Outdoor yeah. Show? It doesn't have the ring. No, I got it, I got it. The only outdoor show. The only out. I'm yes. good with that. I'm yeah, good with that. Yeah, that's show. good. You tell me where you're going to find another one. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> well, I got one more exciting thing I want the to say. The longest we... running outdoor show. Boom. That just happened. It did, too. Mm-hmm. It... <laughs> Speaking of, uh, what was it, uh, Super Coppers? Super Coppers. Cal. Cal. Oh, yes. Cal, the oh, super yeah. copper. Okay. He's a gonna... slow this morning. What? Yeah. Yeah. He wasn't like having well, a big was... B coffee in us. Well, so let yeah, me... well you got to have your big B coffee. Yes. That's what keeps you going. Right? That's for sure. Now, let me uh, say one more thing that I found out that is kind of off. That's not. Oh, that's not I big see. Big. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I was in the yeah. background here. Now <laughs> he just, I know. He yeah. doesn't even drink coffee. Oh, no. Yeah. He drinks hot cocoa. That's... Oh. Hot cocoa. Well, okay. real men like me drink hot chocolate. Really? Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I got something awesome going on that uh, that I heard about yesterday, and it's April 18, 2015. So this year, you don't even got to wait <laughs> oh. an extra. April 18, the uh, United States Coast Guard. And the uh, Super Copper Cal, um, the Ottawa County Marine <laughs> Sheriff's Department, the United, Star- uh, United States Coast Guard Auxil- Auxiliary, 
Wow. That was tough for yeah, me to say. I don't wow. know why. Uh, they're going to do a free state and U.S. Coast Guard vessel inspection day, April 18. That means all you've got to do is bring your boat down to the DNR boat ramp overflow. So right across from DNR boat launch, <clears throat> next to Anchorage Marina and Yacht Basin. Where the fish cleaning station yep, is. Yep, across the road by the fish cleaning station. They are going to do a complete free inspection on April 18 from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Oh. You bring your boats down. There will be no... Um, if you have something wrong, yeah, there'll they'll be tell no you how to law enforcement actions taken over that. They're not going to give, you, not, not gonna yeah. give you a ticket for it. Yep, and upon completion, when they say, okay, everything's good on the boat, they'll give you a sticker and they'll place it in your boat so that upon inspection, they'll see it and say, you've already been inspected, have a great day, good luck. Wow, so with you that know. sticker, you'll never get pulled over all summer? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> just throw but, it we're working there. for it. Working yeah, for hey, it. But, that's April 18th. See, that's two days before starting turkey hunting. So uh, after I go sucker spearing on spring break, then I got to get the boat out. Then yep. I got to take it down there on the 18th and get it inspected, get my sticker on it. Then I got to get my turkey calls uh, ready to go in my vest yeah. so I can go out on the 20th and get a turkey. This is a very busy spring. I'm sorry. Absolutely. Just, but I'll tell you what. It's just going to have to wait. As a boater, <laughs> this is huge. This is awesome. A free inspection because. If you get pulled over on the water and you did not go to this inspection, it might not be a free inspection. Law enforcement actions will be taken. Oh. It might not be a free inspection. Right, right. So yeah. get down right. there. That These guys are are giving up their all. own time. <laughs> you know, they're they're giving yeah. their own time to make sure everybody's safe on the water. That's what it's all about. Um the well, United the auxiliary, States Coast Guard auxiliary and the the Ottawa County Marine Sheriff's Department. I think are they great also people. do another one later on, don't they? It's something a little different, I believe. The auxiliary, it's not, a, it's the, not an yeah. inspection. A free inspection for oh, this. No, I, I'll find out what that is. But this whole thing is sponsored by the Coast Guard Station Holland and the Ottawa County Marine Sheriff's Department. That'd be um, Chief Paquette. Yep. And get it get it done before the boating season starts. Then your whole boating season will be a lot right. nicer for you. Yeah. Um, yeah, but if they, you know, they'll do their searches or their uh, uh, ins- inspections and they'll come over by you, see that you got your sticker and say, have a nice day, and you're back on it. All that they want, yeah. everybody wants to be safe out there, so right. make sure that you're safe. Yeah. Oh, definitely. And, and get down there on April things, 18 from 9 to 1. There's Especially people that just got a boat. Yes, absolutely. Uh, you know, they, they bought one last year toward the end of the summer or something, saw a good deal. Yep. And they're not sure of all those rules. Get yep. down there and find that stuff out. Yep. Uh, I got a question. Can we call him Chief Eli because we're not Coast Guard guys? Absolutely not. We can't call him Eli? Nope. We got to call him Chief Paquette? That's disrespectful. Oh. Oh. Listen. Yeah. Mr. Respect yes. over here. Hey. That's right. <laughs> He is a military man for the United States Coast Guard. I will respect him every minute of the way. And we do. We yep. do respect him. Yep. We still call him chief. Yeah, he, he's, <laughs> he worked hard to get there, so I'm all for it, yeah. And, he, and uh, I'm, I, I'm only guessing because Chief Paquette is a really cool guy. Oh, he's, he's an awesome his, guy, and he's an avid his, outdoorsman. But because he's so cool, his crew has to be pretty cool. They, oh yeah, I mean, yeah. It, it, you can't have a guy that's running the place mm-hmm. like that and have people that are not right helpful and nice because because he is. Yep. You know, uh, same thing with uh, Cal. Yeah. Uh, Sergeant Cuny. You know, they're awesome people and Great they're, people. they're very helpful and they very knowledgeable. Mm-hmm. So uh, you know, get down there on April 18 and get those boats inspected. Make you sure you get what? them out of storage before that, so you don't have to rush that day. Yeah, and remember, they're all out there to keep you safe. Keep yep. everybody safe. So well, yeah. Get down there, get it inspected. Yep. Make sure you're good because I know <clears throat> I would rather drag my boat down there, meet these these cool guys for a day, and make sure that when I do go out fishing, right. I don't have to worry about tickets because well, they already told me what needs to be fixed. Yeah. I'm not, with my boats, it needs to be I fixed. <laughs> I'm not so worried. I'm not so worried about the ticket as when I'm out there doing a West Michigan Walleye Club tournament mm-hmm. that I am able to have a safe boat absolutely versus you know i don't care about the 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 fact of the ticket well the the fact is he knows already he's not catching those walleyes so <laughs> yeah. he joined the west michigan walleye club so that's he might how i'm well gonna learn safe boat then. that's how i'm gonna learn you're right you're right because when you go to the tournaments for west michigan walleye club you learn yep. how to fish yep. yeah they teach you so anyways, they beat you first april yeah. 18. then they teach you yeah. <laughs> april 18 9 to 1 get down there and see those guys and uh have a safe and fun boating uh, uh And by year. April 18, they'll probably be able to stop in the store at 6.30, 7 o'clock. You know what we're going to – I Tim think we're there. having the – And Tim will be there. You got Hot it. cocoa. Yep. 
You know it. <laughs> With his Chocolate. hot cocoa. Chocolate. Real man. He will put coffee on for you. The, oh, really? I think when we have... But his uh, coffee will definitely grow hair on your chest. Oh, no. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. Because he drinks hot cocoa, yes. so he fills that filter up. You're know? not supposed yeah, to right top to that top. off? Brim it up. <laughs> yeah, I thought yeah. just brim it. You'll be fine. <laughs> no, Tim does know how to make coffee, and he makes coffee for anybody who wants coffee there yep. to, at the shop. And free, free coffee. Come on nice. up. Nice. So it is It is pretty awesome. Yeah. But, yeah, make sure you get down there, folks, and uh, stay tuned, because we're going to talk a little bit about a new manufactured Wildcat load. Oh, yeah. A new cartridge by Nosler. By Nosler. Farmers Co-op Elevator in Hudsonville is your food plot headquarters with over 40 different seed varieties to choose from, providing in-house soil testing as well as fertilizers, lime, and equipment to plant, maintain, and get maximum performance out of your food plot. Visit the Farmers Co-op at 3302 Prospect Street in Hudsonville. For a complete list of products and services, check them out online at fcelevator.com. Lines are open. Give us a call, 395-1450. We'll be back here shortly on the Outdoor Show. Welcome back to the Outdoor Show, brought to you by Powderhorn Guns and Archery. For all your arrow-knocking, gun-cocking, fish-hooking, flag-waving, stand up and sing, God bless America, hunting and fishing needs. Lines are open. Give us a call, 395-1450. We're back, ready to answer your questions right here on the Outdoor Show. Or down at Powderhorn. We could go down there and answer your questions. There's no whistling today. Yeah, what happened? (laughs) There we go. I was waiting for it. (laughs) <laughs> Bob, uh, by the way, you have to stop by Powderhorn on your way through. Oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah, he gotta, called you out last yeah. week. Mm, yeah. I couldn't believe he did that. I know. I, know. I listened serious. to the podcast. I was like, holy cow. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you what, I had a lot of people come down this week that I sent to you. Yeah, I've been a lot getting of gunsmithing quite a bit of coming business. On. Yep, I yeah. really appreciate that. Oh, yep. what? You're, the, yeah. you're not a gunsmith. You are the, the only. Wow. The gunsmith. Yes. It's just like the only mm-hmm. outdoor show. Oh. The only gunsmith. Oh. Okay, let me the ask you something about your business. The only gun business. training. I could do this later, but why not use up airtime, right? Okay. Uh, <laughs> Sacco extract, uh, extractor on a 700, can you put one on? No. Okay. I, I don't do that, but okay. it can be done. Okay. Yeah, but I just saw it before sending it out. I better yep. ask you. Okay, yeah. cool. Back to it. <laughs> use up the airtime. Yeah. Yep. The 26 Nosler. Yeah. That, Unbelievable. Uh, yep. The, what you were telling me about the ballistics. There's all kinds of press. They marketed this thing super heavy. I mean, if you've read any periodicals on shooting, hunting, whatever, the 26 Nosler marketed it said flat out, lights out. In other <coughs> words, it's flat to 415 yards. You don't have this to. This guy comes up with the greatest things flat out, lights out. Oh, that's Nosler. Just like uh, right on, dead on. Yeah, all the time. time. <laughs> <laughs> Last, I like that. What I company is that? Has an awesome ring. What's that? That's MOA Gunsmith. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> In fact, last weekend I got text messages after saying that uh, yes, my buddy did. Mitch was watching it or <laughs> oh, yeah. listening, and he texted back. He's like, "That's awesome." He came in about noon, walked through the door, looked at me, says, "Right on, right on, dead on, <laughs> all that's the time." That's I good. said, "That's been patented." Yeah. <laughs> no trademark. Trademark. Oh, I'm sorry. Right. Trademark. Yeah, yes. yeah, trademark. My we bad. copyright that. Right. We can't patent that. Right. Oh, well, we can patent a twenty-six nozzle. Is what they did. Mm. <laughs> no, I was petting did that. We'll tell you a little more about that later. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyways, let's talk about this 26 Nosler. Yeah, well. Tell us about it. Nosler came out with it, and what it actually is, the parent case is a 7 millimeter Remington Ultra Mag. So Nosler took that case, changed the dimensions a little bit, um, raked the shoulder to 35 degrees, and blew the body out a little bit. Essentially what they made was a factory overbore long-range cartridge. This will take a 130 grain bullet and push it 3,400 feet per second. 130. So with a that, that's moving. It's smoking. That's some. That's some. That's some energy and velocity. Power. Yeah, and there is <laughs> that, that, some, come, that come through. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. There's some knockdown yeah. power. <laughs> At 415 yards, right Jeez. there. That's awesome. Wow. Yeah. Oh yeah, because we talked about MOA middle yep. of angle. So, and where that lines up. Yeah, and what they're marketing this shoots. gun at, and what's the the big push behind this, is if you're out hunting whatever large game, you don't have to adjust for elevation. 
you can put the crosshairs point blank out to 415 yards and squeeze the trigger. Kaboom. And, and you're going to get a hit. Just like that. <laughs> mm-hmm. Right on? Dead on. All the, All the time. time. <laughs> Especially with 26 Nosler. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right on, because that's where it goes. <laughs> yeah. 3,400 feet per second. That's, yep. that's cooking. That's with, uh, with their um, At 129 grains. Um, mm-hmm. AccuBond, their bullet. And that's their manufactured ammo. So um, what you've got is if you're at about three inches high at 100 yards, you're zeroing in. With this particular cartridge at that load, it's going to drop five inches out to 425 yards. So that's all your point-blank range um, figures that are in there. So you're high at 100, you're a little low at 425, but you're at eight inches overall. Overall, so that's an eight-inch group. Range. Yeah. So if you want it, your target range is eight inches, don't think. If he's out to 425 yards, put the crosshairs dead on the chest, touch it off. That means you could take a paper plate as a nine-inch circle. Mm-hmm. You could take a paper plate, put it out there at four, four and a quarter, put your crosshairs on it, and shoot it every And time. it'll hit low at four and a quarter. If right. you bring it back to 100, it'll hit high. But right. it's still in the kill zone. So you're going to get a lethal kill. And that was their whole marketing push is you don't have to, with this cartridge, you don't have to calculate for elevation. You just hold on. You don't have to. Go. You don't have to learn to do your trigonometry and all that other stuff. Right. Yep. So um, another point I was going to make is this particular um, cartridge. If you've got a Remington Seven Mag, right. you can have it rebarreled to the twenty six Nosler. Hmm. It's a Magnum bolt face. Okay. But the cartridge length, they had restrictions down where they can fit it in an aught six size action. Yep. So. Really? Awesome. That's the beauty of it. If you've got a 7 mag and you want a 26 nozzler, rebarrel job and you're there. Nice. To do a rebuild, rebarrel job, what does that take? Uh, putting a new barrel on and you know, it, setting headspace. So if somebody comes to you and says, hey, can you set me up with a 26 nozzler? Yep, because I've noticed that the barrel suppliers I deal with are now chambering for 26 nozzler. Hmm. Um, at first they weren't. Now the tooling is out there and... So we can get that. it done right here. Who oh, production yeah. makes that the gun? The only right now? gunsmith. Hmm? Who? What production makes the gun? Remington. No, Nosler makes the gun. Oh, it's, it's you can Patriot. only buy it in the Patriot of Nosler. If you want a complete gun built, okay, Nosler will build you the M48 Patriot rifle and 26 Nosler. Otherwise, you got to rechamber. Otherwise, you rechamber barrel. your current rifle for that. Okay. Yep. Which okay. can be done. So Savage and Remington and Winchester haven't gotten it. No, nope, I think there's patent things on there where they're kind of okay. So they're the going to hold it. Okay. Oh yeah, they're raking in the the big profit of it right now. Makes sense. It's a it's a hot cartridge. You know, and that that uh, Nosler's gun was ranked way high last year. Oh yeah, way high. Yeah, it won a lot of awards. And in fact, I think it said it was the best. What would they call it? Called it hunting long range gun on the market. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. It was very impressive, and it's a probably a thirteen hundred dollar retail. Um, fifteen, I 15, think, for yeah. the Patriot. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's a yep. great gun, and it's worth every penny of it. Wow, yeah. Nosler Patriot. Yep. That's that's nice. <laughs> yeah. Man, I mean, oh, if, man. If you look at energy on that twenty-six Nosler shooting that same bullet, the uh-huh. one twenty-nine Acubon, Acubon, at four hundred yards, it has over two thousand foot-pounds of energy when it hits. Really? The thing is, it's it's a missile. You know, you're going to get clean kills with that kind of energy. Wow. So oh, yeah, you, you don't only have velocity, you've got tons of energy, too. And it'll stiffen them right up and put them down. Oh, yeah. So this could take an average shooter and make them pretty darn good when it comes to hunting. You could do really good. Is that what you're trying to say? Yeah, you, oh, would, you would be okay. Oh, <laughs> well, wow. You know, they're good, but they're not miracle wow. workers. Let's oh, face it. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, the reason I, I don't hit anything at 425 yards is because I hunt with a short gun. I bet. <laughs> and if you're trying to say pistol, that's no problem. Oh. I kill them out to 800 every day. Yeah, with right. With a two-inch barrel. <laughs> yeah. I challenge you. Okay, I, yeah. I'll forfeit. <laughs> Not even at 21 I like foot. those short guns. Um, I, I don't like having to carry that long gun around. Oh, I do like the so long not guns. Not only is he but not I like the long guns. with the rifle, he's sissy. I like the long guns where I can pull the truck up, open the tailgate, open the case, Take the gun out and walk about 10 steps and sit down at the bench, you know, yep. and then do some oh, shooting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. You know, that target shooting's the ticket, though. You get to have fun. You get to oh, see your yeah. groups, and you don't have to clean anything when the day's done. This is true. Yep. Except for the gun. Right. 
See, that's what I'm doing. I'm carrying when I hunt, I carry the short gun, so I save my energy to do the the cleaning yeah. and ammunition. <laughs> See, there's a method <laughs> to the madness. Oh yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Well, anyway, with this, the 26 Nosler, uh, just to 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 clarify a little bit how that 8.3 comes out. Mm-hmm. Um, as a total, the 3.3 high at 100 yards, five low at four and a, four and a quarter, the uh, MOA comes into play. Yep. And let's let's give the people a, an easier way to understand MOA, such as we talked beforehand, because uh, even the Mr. Rifle Shooter over on the other side of the, the oh. bench here, he oh, said, oh, yeah. I didn't know that part of it. I really didn't. Yeah, that I know. And that's, that's, yeah. So there's things and that And I'm we, not a rifle shooter. All I do is pull triggers. Boom. Trigger have man. fun with it. I'm a oh, trigger man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> My dad is the brains behind this oh, outfit. Okay. I won't lie about that. <laughs> dad, Dad's the spotter. He's oh, the, yeah. He's the, he's the squeezer. But when yeah. I'm hunting, he keeps saying, aim 48 inches high, boom. Ha, <laughs> <laughs> ha. Dang it. <laughs> that's that's because he wants to you know call you out. On oh, this yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. He'll call in one day and be like, he's not that good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Anyways, okay. let's talk him away. Um. Okay, for MOA, uh, it's minute of angle or bullet flight. So. And I want to say something. we got to believe you because it's your name. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's because he's right on. Dead, Dead on. on. All the all time. All the time. <laughs> <laughs> we just like saying that. I know. That's wow. awesome. <laughs> Anyways, MOA. I'm sorry I interrupted again. Uh, at 100 yards, uh, minute of angle is bullet flight. So um, at one inch impact at 100 yards, any correction you make is one minute of angle so if you have impact at 100 yards and you click some adjustments to, for one inch one moa now if you push that out to 200 yards moa at 200 yards is two inches it's it's all magnified so at 400 yards if you want to shoot moa at 400 yards and you shoot a four inch group you're shooting moa at 400 yards so if you're shooting sub MOA at 400 yards, if you're shooting two inch groups at 400 yards, you're shooting sub MOA. So that's it's just a, that's like a half. Yeah, just like your click adjustments. <laughs> I just caught on to that. <laughs> this is amazing. Oh yeah. <laughs> See, but I, now we could really confuse Tim if we went to the 1.43 or 4.73, and then started calculating that. See, it, it doesn't confuse yeah. me because I just put them all in the same hole. Oh, do, you know, yeah, 8,943 yeah, right. yards. I just figured yeah. that's Buzz, easy. Yeah. Buzz, please call. call in. Please call. <laughs> Tell the truth. See, I had no yeah. clue that. I thought MOA meant one inch group, no so matter where it was. If if you're a thousand yards shooting a one inch group, you shouldn't be here talking to us. You should be raking in huge money. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Well, I'm that's not a, even saying I can do that at 50. Point one four seven three MOA. Yeah, right. Right. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I had no clue because, like, you know, the guns that come in that guarantee MOA is yep. a three-shot group, one mm-hmm. inch yep. at 100 yards. That's MOA. Yeah. Which would be four inches at 400 yards. Mm-hmm. It makes or sense to me now that Bob, you know, yep. put kid gloves on and spelled it out to me. It makes sense now. Well, because if you're aiming yeah. at this spot and you're off by an inch at 100, you're gonna be off it makes forward. sense that it's going to continue to go further out right. it magnifies. at yep. a further distance. Yep. So, you know, one inch at one, two at two. Yep. Uh, Your click values are exactly the same way. As yeah. the distance yes. increases, the click value on your scope also magnifies. Yep. Which, that's why a lot of them are going to the 8th inch MOA for two and 400 yards. Yes. Years. Yep. And I've seen that before already where, you know, you try to make a a half inch sight change at 200, it's just not going to happen. Right. Yeah, you're going to go one inch. Yeah. Yep. On your half inch. Yep. yep. Yeah. Well, that's not right. Coming in, they got to they got to make it so that we can make the adjustment. Right, right. That's why you get your smaller, um, smaller increments right. on your adjustment. Yep. yep. Okay. Eighth inch. Okay. Um, Do they make a sixteenth? No. Just eighth inches. Eighth. Yeah. yeah. Yep. That's when what we, we come use. back. Sorry about that, Bob. Oh, that's okay. When we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about an interesting story about Kirby Allen and where this. Nosler was. Nosler came from. Yes, exactly. Stay tuned. <laughs>
The Outdoor Show is brought to you by Advantage Marine in Zealand with competitive prices and personalized service to meet all your needs. Repair, storage, winterizing, parts, and more. Call Advantage Marine in Zealand at 616-748-9235. Or stop in and see Dave at 8755 Riley Street in Zealand. That's at the corner of 88th and Riley on the northeast side of Zealand. Lines are open. Give us a call, 395-1450. We'll be back here shortly on The Outdoor Show. Welcome back to the Outdoor Show, brought to you by MOA Gunsmithing, exclusive dealer for Leatherwood, Hilux Optics, and 300 Below Cryogenics Freezing, as well as firearms repairs, specializing in Mauser rifle custom work and restoration. MOA Gunsmithing is your accuracy headquarters for target and varmint shooting. Visit knowyearzero.com. For rifle builds, accuracy tests, and product reviews, call 616-502-3374. MOA Gunsmithing, right on. Dead on, all the time. Nice. We got <laughs> We got to get music. Tim tried yeah. to mimic that yeah. last week. Did you, did you listen to that part? I did. It was he awesome. Was, he was trying to do that. Do it again. Do it, Tim. Will not. We <laughs> need to get. We need to get music to gently play in the background for that. Oh. Moa wow. gunsmithing, right on, dead on, all the time. <laughs> Just like that, it happened. Wow. I have power. <laughs> yeah. Well done. Yeah. Well done, Kate. Yeah, yeah. Well yeah. done. <laughs> nice. So we said we're going to tell you a little story when we yep. come back. For sure. Yep. So let's tell a little story about Kirby Allen out in Montana. Yep. I'm a ballistic nut. So when 26 Nosler came out, right away I started digging through books and researching what's going on and you know, are, are there, is Where'd there data Where did it come correct? from? Yeah. What's, you know, and all what's that. the scoop on this? So I did a little look in, and Allen Magnums have been around forever. And Allen Precision out west um, has his own line of wildcat cartridges. And this all started talking about his um, 224 wildcat. And so it's a, a 22 caliber neck down. It was a, a hot round. It didn't work too good for him. So then the discussion went into the 26 Nosler. And in the email, he replied back to me, and he was just saying that um, his 6.5 millimeter Allen Express is basically identical to the 26 Nosler. And I'm reading this off the email he sent me. His name's Kirby Allen Precision um, Allen Precision Guns. We're not making it up. No, no, this is. <laughs> I've got it right in front of me here. And he says, in fact, an interesting story. I had a guy call me up several years ago that wanted some of my 6.5 millimeter Allen Express cases to look over as he was thinking about building a rifle but wanted to look them over first. Never heard back from him, but down the road, I found out that this guy worked for Nosler. Imagine that. Imagine that. Yeah. So then he goes on to say, my 6.5 millimeter Allen Express is based on a neck down 300 Dakota and fire formed to Allen Magnum shoulder case and body taper. After a few years, Nosler comes out with the 26 Nosler, which is nearly identical to my 6.5 millimeter Allen Express. There's enough minute dimensional differences that there's no way you could go after them legally for taking my design, but I'm positive they designed it around my 6.5 millimeter Allen Express platform. Now, if you Google Allen Express cartridges, you will come on a site that gives all their um, ballistic data, and you will see he's got a whole range from 257 right on up to 338 Allen Magnums, and they hands down outperform this Nosler cartridge. If you, well, they only have the 6.5 to compare it to, but ballistically they outperform it. Well, just to help people with conversions here, the 6.5 millimeters converts to uh, just over a quarter inch, 0.26. Right. And that's where you're hearing differences of the 26 Nosler versus the 6.5 Allen Express. So just just to help the listeners that, right. that don't understand the conversions or don't know the conversions right off the top of their head for millimeters to yeah uh, caliber uh, regular caliber, which is the um, dimensions uh, a fraction of an inch. Right. A it's, 50 cal is a half inch. Yeah. It's the same thing with a different name. Right. Yep. So That's I thought that was dirty. interesting that um, that they picked up on his. Research cartridge design, ballist, design of ballistics, and then they took a seven rum case Nosler did and tweaked it a little to come up with theirs. But ballistically, it was pretty 
crazy how they were so close. Yeah. And then just to come across this guy and talk to him and have this come up in conversation just was extremely interesting. Those kind of conversations are always interesting. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Uh, I just looked it up. Uh, nice website, actually. Yeah. It's uh, It comes up as uh, APSRifles.com. Yep. APSRifles.com. Yep. Uh, you got the, the triple W in front of there, but uh, Allen Precision Shooting and the Allen Express Wildcats are right on the front page. Yep. It's some good reading. If you research the stuff he's done and his cartridge development, right? I mean, the guy's top notch. He's r- right on the edge of genius. You got to like people that are right on the edge uh, of genius. Yeah. I you can it. learn so much from them. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's why Tim hangs out with me. Yep. Right. I got to teach him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I thought. Right, right, yeah. right. I need I you to come it. in to teach him how to shoot now, okay? <laughs> I love right. it. I love it. You guys are so oh. uplifting. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's why we're here. Now, does this... <laughs> our job. <clears throat> this Allen Precision, will he build rifles? Yes. So you yeah, can order them from Oh, yeah. Yep. Yep. So, so check got, it out. You got and, more but, on the way? But the better choice... What's that? You have four of them on the way? I do, yeah. Well, good, I was just going to say, yeah. the better choice is just call Bob and have him make the content. Absolutely. Because yes. then you're going to know what you're asking for, because he's going to help you understand What's it. What's oh, MOA's yeah. phone number? 502-3374. Look at that. Yep. It's drilled right in there. I didn't even have to look at it. Proud of you. Yep. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Yeah. That's a 616 in front of that. Yes, That's it is. That's right. 502-3374. Yep. It, right on, dead on. All, all the, the time. time. <laughs> yep. And things are pretty busy, so if, if you don't get through, just leave a message. I'll get back to you. But So sometimes I can get to the phone right away. Sometimes I can't. If I'm in a loud environment, I don't hear it ring, but leave a message. Yeah, one to three is nap time is what he's saying. It's, well, yeah, you know, it is. And I, I don't know if this happens at all, Bob, but to, to you know help people out, please leave a phone number. Yep. I get calls all the oh, time. Right. Uh, call me back. Yeah. Call oh. me back. And what? My, you know, well, you got caller ID. Well, not if I'm in an area where, where the phone through. doesn't right. pick it up and yeah. it goes directly to a voicemail. I, don't, I have no idea yep. what that is. Yep. Uh, so, you know, make sure you leave name, number, and a brief message. That way we can get back to people when when uh, right. we have the availability to do so. Yep. Because uh, we're of old school. We don't have those phones in our pockets all the time. Yeah, and we don't, that's we don't, true. We don't check them every five minutes right. or less. <laughs> Overbore. I'm young school. Yeah. <laughs> no, look at Tim. Yeah, look yeah. at Tim. Yeah, because he's over there pushing the buttons That's on his right. phone. That's right, yeah. I think he's checking Twitter right now or something, aren't you? <laughs> hey, I should do a tweet this morning before we leave. Oh. <laughs> you know. Anyway, uh, overbore can yeah. get quite technical. Now, the, the 26 Nosler is an overbore cartridge, and you're going to hear a lot of terms about overbore and everything, mm-hmm. and I kind of broke it down into simple terms to understand. Okay. It's essentially a large case with a small bore. So I'm just going to read this out to you, and um, that way you'll be able to understand kind of what they say when overbore cartridges. Okay. When you have the increase of powder grain until the pressure curve goes up, and this is on reloads, as you're adding more powder to increase your velocity. So you're increasing the grains of powder until the pressure curve goes up, and it goes up fast. However, the velocity curve begins to lag. Pressure up. Velocity starts to lag. When it starts to lag badly, at that point, or the delta, that's when the two gir- t- curves begin to separate. So when those two curves, velocity and pressure, begin to separate, that is the bore capacity of that case. From that point, you start to get diminishing returns from extra powder. Okay. So that's velocity up. Uh-huh. And then you start to get pressure pressure up and velocity down. That is your indication that you're at the maximum of that, that potential from that case. So the 26 nozzler is definitely an overbore because there's a lot of airspace. Uh-huh. You could put more powder and not reap any benefit from it. <clears throat> the beautiful thing with the marvel of powders today and slow burning like H1000, overbore can be controlled. If anybody understands electrical sine waves, yes. leading and lagging, and voltage yep. and amperage, that's exactly what we're talking that's about. That's right. <laughs> you go to my website, check it out. I'll post some overbore stuff and give you some things know your, on there for other know, reference. Knowyourzero.com. Yes. Right on, dead on, all the time.